Okay. Previously hey on Star Trek. Stop, stop. Welcome to this Let's episode go. of Fan Service, which is your hey. weekly live show that goes on a geek field trip in the world of pop culture. We have an amazing show lined up for you today. Yeah. We are going to talk about Star Trek because we always talk about Star Wars. And last week, Starfleet Crew came out to uh, kind of make fun of us for never being on Star Wars. I, Star Trek. I kick. told you I was going to bring my friends. Well, I was more surprised he has friends. Uh, yeah, so am I, honestly. Um, so I am your host, so Gavin lovely. Stone, joined by. I'm Harley. Hey everyone, I'm Jeffrey. And I'm the bearded one called Pocky. The bearded one, yeah. The bearded like, one. Like, I think Jeffrey said he saw a picture of you without your beard. Yes. I imagine that it was the most crazy. strangest, abnormal okay, thing on. I've ever well, seen. Let's test this theory. Let's see what it looks like. No. Someone no. Take I would get an object away from her, please. But it makes uh, me happy. Oh, no, man. <laughs> <laughs> she was I'll, put it, I'll put it next to the Klingon. She, she clearly misses it. So, yeah, we're going to have a great show lineup for you guys today. I'm super excited because. Mm-hmm. We've had plenty of guests on in the past, and this these are these are by far one of my favorite guests we've ever had. And I was like, you guys just like they always bring it. Like you just have no idea. Um, and he's leaving him with us, so this is gonna be really fun. It's gonna be fantastic. So we have a great show lineup for you today. But what we're gonna start off with is our fun news of the week. So I want to just say this right now: the Dark Crystal prequel series on Netflix was announced yes! today. Yes, and I thought it was a joke, so I went and did all my research for 30 minutes <laughs> to make sure it was real before I lost my crap. I actually did the same thing today, and I said, I was like, oh my gosh, and I said, Netflix, you're giving Netflix and chill a whole new level. The I, 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 yeah. Okay, why are you sad? Because they also announced today uh, four of the cast members for the Labyrinth sequel. And only uh, two of them are worth anything. Well, one of them's dead. I don't know exactly how you're going to get around that. That's terrible. Well, okay, so they have years. Lady Gaga uh, and she, Johnny Depp coming in, but they got uh, Jennifer Conley and Toby Fraud back. Good. Wait, wait, and wait. And Toby Fraud is, is going to be doing the head puppeteer. Is, is Lady Gaga going to be Jareth? I don't know. She's called Goblin what? Witch. Uh, All right, so lots of two minutes of news. I I was excited because they actually showed a Skeksy at the end of the trailer. That's a new one. It was was a Skeksy. I think that was amazing. And it is the Jim Henson. It's the Jim Henson Creature Corp. I love the fact the trailer starts with Jim Henson talking about how like the Dark Crystal wasn't that successful, but it was his favorite movie. It was. It's amazing. It's absolutely amazing. It was beautiful. So that had, that hit us today. The and legend then, returns. And then, well, they had also announced they're doing The Witcher earlier this week. Yes. So Netflix is on a roll. I ain't gonna lie. I so, really enjoy Netflix series. Like, I do. They I agree. are just brilliant, and they're very different from what you would see in the theaters. BoJack oh, Horseman, come on now. That so, show is amazing. It is. So just to remind everybody, and then we had some other news headline that just because HBO was feeling a little left out of everyone's love, uh, we all know the movie Get Out. It was a great movie. That was funny. Never saw it. It was funny. Didn't say it. It was nope. good. But Peel, from Keenan and Peel, who directed that movie, he's also doing, he's producing, and he's also directing a new HBO TV series called Lovecraft Country, yes. which is about a, 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 young black, uh, a, a young black man who's trying to go find his father in the 1950s. Southern racism and H.P. Lovecraft. Right. What and could it, possibly go wrong? And if we've read part of, the, and this is another book series, and yeah, there's way more going on than all that. And it's, it's pretty cool. I recommend it. So we have that to look forward it's to. It's very interesting. You know what we have to look forward to? What? They revealed all the Destiny 2 gameplay footage today, and it blew me away. Plus oh we get Destiny gosh. Funko Pops with the cute little Zer. Like, oh my god. I've, and what, Pocky? It's on PC, so you can now play. Yeah, and that's actually, that was the part that got me, was like Blizzard, Blizzard actually made like, we're going to deal with this, <sighs> which actually means, and this you, you were saying like, wow, we have matchmaking. Yeah, because the company who knows how to do matchmaking the best, Blizzard who makes an eSport out of everything, this will actually be kind of interesting. These two don't understand the joy, but Jasmine's in there going, yes, 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 I bet you she is. I'm actually naked. I'm sorry, we like good games. You don't even play games, and you just... I don't play games. I play Star Trek Online, if you bash that, I swear. every game system they have ever put out. That's right, we talked about this before. (laughs) So we were excited about that. I lost it today watching that. That was right after the Netflix (laughs) announcement. So I spent an hour watching the whole thing going, yes. I think I want... Be thankful that you're not also part of our messaging service, because this was our messaging service. Oh my god, oh my god, oh my god, oh my god! I think I literally watched the Dark Crystal trailer about four or five, six hundred times today. It was just on repeat because it was just like. They're just Crystal. trying to look for that little bit now, more. Now, going into the science aspect, Pocky. No, n- Notosaurus it was just revealed to the public. Um, this is something they've had for a while, but they've been trying to clean it up and everything else. This is a dinosaur they found in this, uh, the oil sands of Canada. It has Canada. its skin. 
can't, can't, yeah, can't, it's like a fully Canada. mummified. It's a fully mummified. And they China. didn't call it unobtaining a source. Yes. yes. Canada, so. has, Canada has oil. And then they also found yeah. a dinosaur that, that they named yeah, Zool. That's oh. actually, yeah, I saw all that today. So Science! Lots of fun Zool. dinosaur news this <laughs> week. Yeah, it's two new dinosaurs. Yeah, two new dinosaurs. And one Zool. of them has its skin. And if you look at this thing, you're like, was this related to Godzilla? Because this thing looks really menacing. It is, it is, Does it's, it? It's, it's oh, pretty menacing. I'll, I'll show you a picture later. Yeah, yeah, after the, the, the show, pictures. I definitely want to check this out. We'll have yeah. that posted on our Facebook group. Don't forget to like it. And us. in the spirit of the fun of the show, CBS released a trailer for Star Trek Discovery today. Yes! <laughs> or was right. it yesterday? It was I think yesterday. It was, today it was, it was yesterday. It was uh-huh. yesterday at like 11, it was but like it, yesterday it, 11 o'clock. It definitely hit uh, it looks everywhere amazing. today. So. Because I was sitting there watching going, you know what I hate about these prequel series? They don't keep the sets of technology looking the way they did in the original series. But I think this is in the reboot series, so yes, it kind of all fits. That, it, it confused me it for a second because I didn't realize reboot. it was a, like, a little like a prequel series. I thought it was like a parody of Star Trek. I was like, oh, this is going to be good. And I, and I How read did more about parody? it. I read more about it. Did you not it, know they were like, making this? No, I didn't. I did not find this out until this what morning. What a horrible Star Trek fan I am a horrible I hope they were checking this out. But no, I, felt, I read more about it. I was just like... So, so my favorite thing about this so series... Excited. My favorite thing about Star this Trek series is that this is not... The captain is not the main character. Yeah. The captain is actually the side character. It's the science officer. She is the main and character of the series. And, you know, I appreciate that. I really do. I think it's going to be very neat. And then, and then They're just taking a different spin on everything. And then just for fun and games, Fox released their trailer for their not Star Trek series that actually looks really funny. Yeah, it's been a really good week for sci-fi and fun science and destiny. I, I, I like the fact that there is now a debate online. Which Star Trek or not Star Trek show are you more interested in watching? Are you well, I'm gonna wa- I'll say right now, I'll give Discovery more of a chance because Seth MacFarlane drives me crazy. But yes. Seth MacFarlane's not the writer. That's the one thing I had to look up. He's it's not him the on screen for the whole show. I'm going to have to be drunk. I'm just going to say but that I right actually now. Like, but I actually like him in Ted and I actually liked him in Sing. So I actually can't wait to see what in he does. In Sing? I couldn't even watch 30 minutes of that movie. That's that how that was. That movie was funny. Sing? Why are you guys on this show? I haven't because seen Because we have Sing. Taste. It's funny. Anything. It's okay. actually a really good movie. Pig. So, I don't want to watch it if it's a singing pig. <laughs> and no, no, no. He has to have magical pigs that die at the end. <laughs> no. <laughs> Why would you kill a pig? Our black cauldron fan here. Um, Gurgi dies. So, it. yeah. Um, Spoiler alert. Doesn't. Doesn't. It's an angel <laughs> movie book. They know. So I was like, so Star Trek. I just imagined so black dark. cauldron out of this. This is science today. Science. That's been this week's news Dying. recap from us. <laughs> I've had lots of fun with it, but it's time to get into the bulk of the show. Hey, I'm, I'm excited for fat. this geek versus geek because oh. I get to judge, and these two have to tell me who the best Star Trek captain is. And I'm gonna spoil it: Picard and Kirk are not even in the running. By, by the by, the way, we like to ask this to be removed because someone's gonna get cut later if we don't. I will take it with me when I leave. Again, someone else other than her. So. Here is this week's Geek vs. Geek. So, welcome to Geek vs. Geek, our weekly debate where we pit our geeky hosts against each other over mostly absurd topics. Mostly. Today we are talking about the best Star Trek captain and contestant number one. I, it's light on. I get, um, Cisco! I am Captain Cisco of the Defiant and Deep Space Nine. And we have contestant number two. Jeffrey Lord, and I represent the USS Voyager, Captain Catherine Janeway of the Delta Quadrant. All right, so here's how this game works. They each get one minute opening to defend their captain. They each get one minute rebuttal to counter the arguments made by each person and one minute closing. At the end, I decide who made the best argument, and we're going to see who wins, and that winner becomes next week's judge. So, are you guys ready? Ready. Pocky, your minute starts now. Captain Sisko is possibly one of the most badass captains in all of Star Trek. You get a little bit of Kirk with his rugged toughness and his I will punch everything in the face, but also get the diplomatic parts of Picard, a man who knows how to balance between what the Federation wants and what aliens want, and you get Captain Sisko, a man who is not afraid to take charge or when to intimidate another group of people, including two Klingons who are trying to do a staring contest against him. He won. I'm done. All right. J- 
Jeffrey, your minute opening starts now. I like how you're mentioning all these other captains, but we're just talking about one single captain. And uh, Captain Catherine Janeway, you know, they get stuck out into the Delta Quadrant. And I'm not going to explain how they do, because you have to go see the Voyager series to see how. She is one of the most powerfulest captains there is out there. Powerfulest? Oh, yes. That's a word to my <laughs> vocabulary now. She is, she is so heartwarming. She is confident in everything. She takes courage in her work, and every, she masters everything about that ship. Her crew becomes her family. She needs to get back home. She will sacrifice the whole ship so she, they do not lose technology. The crew follows her every step of the way. The alliances, the millions of people that they have Ten saved. Seconds. It is literally, she's one of the best captains there is in there. And also, she's a female captain. Oh, he played the ginger card on you. I play the race card. All right, Rocky, your <laughs> one minute rebuttal starts now. My one minute rebuttal is this. You said that she's a strong female if they had a, had a, a family. But Cisco literally had a family. He had to, in the middle of a space station, surrounded by enemies, people who didn't like him, even shape sifty aliens who come in and just kill everyone in their sights. He had a son with him trying to raise a family, literally a family at the same time, and take other young ones in to help them grow as people. Cisco also built the Defiant. When the Federation didn't have the balls to stand against both the Marquis and the Borg, what does he do? He builds an unstoppable ship that even writers had to like figure out a way to not have that thing around to beat the Borg. When the Borg shows up and the Defiant goes, yo, they go, um, we don't want a piece of that. And they leave. He kicks the Borg's butt. Ten when the seconds. Defiant shows up, he kicks their butt. The Marquis shows up, he kicks their butt. He is that badass. That cool. I'm done. All right, Jeffrey, your one minute starts now. Okay, yeah, he's that badass. That's really great. He builds the Defiant. whoop de doo The Voyager, okay, he has a family. Cisco has a family. That's great and all, but she took the whole crew, 152 crew members as her own family. You even lay a finger on anyone, she would sacrifice herself to beam down and wreck havoc just to get that crew member back, just to get any technology back. They were lost in the Delta Quadrant. Hello? You have any idea what happened out there? And the Borg? Oh, yes, that's right. Cisco kicked the Borg's butt. Dude, wait till my ending, and I'll tell you exactly what she did to the Borg. Are you done? I'm done. All right, these have been pretty good arguments so far, so let's get to the closing. Hockey, let's hear your one minute starts now. My one minute has to start with this. Let's look at the Q stories that showed up. Because after Next Generation, everyone had to have a Q story for some stupid reason. When Cisco gets Q, he taunts him. He makes members of his crew disappear. And how does Cisco react? He punches Q in the gut and then uppercuts him and KOs him and says, You get off my ship now. And Q does. Q doesn't go back. Why? Because Q is afraid of the pimp hand that is Cisco. Cisco, even after all that, you say that he is willing, that Janeway was willing to sacrifice. Cisco was willing to sacrifice an entire life's work to prevent the Marquis and other aliens from getting his stuff. Cisco was willing to sacrifice everything in his life. Cisco was willing to even sacrifice his, the mere his, his mere identity to save the universe and the ideas of the Federation, even if Ten he seconds. had to for, forego those ideas to keep them preserved. Cisco was the idea of darkness in Star Trek that never happened before, and that's why he's a great captain because he had more layers than just diplomat or just punk. All right, come on, Janeway, close this out. Janeway, you know what? That's really great on Cisco and everything he's done, and he's a great, great character. But the writers, the way they wrote Janeway, she was a female captain who. In the Delta Quadrant, a lot of their enemy looked down on female captains. She showed him who was boss. And in the 90s, having a female main actress was so huge in, in that, in that uh, 90s culture. You have no, like, it was just ridiculous. Cause, and still today, women are frowned upon when they're main characters. It is true. You look at forms and everything. The way this actress played this character did such a significant, beautiful job. Mm -hmm. She had heart, she had courage, stamina, strength, everything. You mess with the Voyager, she's going to come back Ten tenfold. And on top of that, ladies and gentlemen, this is a spoiler. Three, two, spoiler, one. Janeway defeated the Borg. 
She went against the temporal directive. Whoop de doo. But she saved Five, still millions of people four, for defeating the three, Borg. Henceforth, two, where we have the allies of the one. collective. Done. <laughs> I like the Borg, so Janeway loses points for killing him. Just so you know. I like the Borg too. I'm not gonna right, lie. So this is really I, like, I like the Cybermen clones because I've never watched the one with Cisco, so I have no idea who he was. But I did watch Voyager, but I thought it was a worst dis display of Lost in Space ever because I love the Lost in Space con concept. No, that's good. I liked your defense of Janeway. But I have to give it to Cisco simply for the pimp hand comment. Because, I'm sorry, I always think Star Trek needs that edgier thing. And Janeway could have been nice and edgy, but he beat up a god and got him to be afraid of him. I will You beat the boar, yeah, but a god punched him with a pimp hand. Cisco wins! Thank you. But, hey, you know what I have to say? Janeway was awesome, you're right. But also, think about it this way. Cisco is a black captain. Can't you of just take your no, victory no, no, and not have to, take like, a victory, Pocky. Okay, everybody wins here. Get a participation no, no, agreement. Congratulations. Oh, 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 oh. Congratulations. Like, we're violent here on this or something. So, Pocky gets to win. And he gets to judge next time. Yeah, he does. Because next week we're doing a special show, so it's what? Oh, sorry. two weeks. So, that's been Geek vs. Geek. We hope you enjoyed it. If you have a topic you want to see us, hit us up online and let us know. But now it's time to get into our main subject of To Boldly Go with the special guests from the Starfleet Archangel Station. I always slur that somehow, but they'll be up here in just a minute. So we'll be right back. I, I you cannot. No, you, can't. you can't. You're good. Okay, I'm. I'm, I'm, I'm come I'm over not, here. You're good. I'm not I'm right there. Oh, you're good, Pocky. Do not worry. You're no, all I'm, good. I'm not. I'm not. So, guys, I'm hey, come on, scoot in. Welcome. Thank you so much for being on the set here tonight. Okay, we're going to put people behind. Yeah. I'm literally over We're good. Don't worry, guys. Come on in. So, how are you guys all doing tonight? Pretty good? Fantastic. Yeah. Yeah. yeah, excellent. So, tell us uh, what you guys do and tell us a little about yourself. Uh, well, I mean, the Archangel Station is Captain. a. Is a uh, <laughs> I'm the commanding officer, mm -hmm. which is the chapter president of, of the organization, and uh, we just recently moved to Austin, so now we're officially an Austin chapter. Uh, that's uh, at SFI.org, so you can come check us out. That's Starfleet. The um, I uh, brought you something too. Oh, what? <laughs> oh, but, uh, but. oh, car. Oh, board. a card. Okay. We have a business card. <laughs> <laughs> Archangel Station. I like this. This is neat. So we're a, we're a chapter of Starfleet, the International Star Trek Fan Association. And I hear the the, inter the International Association is huge worldwide. We have almost yeah. five thousand members worldwide. Oh my gosh, that's amazing. So uh, go ahead and introduce all you guys. What do you? So who are you? I'm Reed Bates. Uh, I'm the operations officer aboard the uh, station, and. Uh, Party planner. Party, Party planner. planner is really my. You're my kind of gal. All yeah. right. The next. Mary Webb. Mary Webb. Uh, medical officer. Medical officer. Um, Lloyd Bates. I'm the chapter president, commanding officer. Oh my gosh, that's awesome. Uh, Jessica Hinch. Kathy Hinch. Matthew Hill. I'm the executive officer. I basically do all his dirty work. <laughs> <laughs> I know how that is because we're, you know, we're with Gavin one. and such like that. So, <laughs> Here, so, let's just in yeah. just a little bit more, guys. For in the in the next gen parlance, he would be number one. So how long has your guys' uh, your fleet have been active? Like how long have you guys been going on? Uh, Starfleet's been around since the mid seventies, I think seventy six when it was when it was really started going, and it started in Lufkin, Texas. Oh wow! By a couple nice. guys. And you guys are now in Austin. Yep. Yes, our chapter's in Austin. Yeah, we originally uh, plank hold was uh, nineteen ninety nine. Nineteen ninety nine. Oh wow, that's crazy. And you guys, you guys uh, also, I've seen some of some of the uh, stuff. Uh, some other chapters do like they do the the, the rifles, like they do rifle maneuvers and everything. And I've seen those mm -hmm. and they're really awesome to, to watch because they're done by some military guys who like spin them like real so, real rifles, I guess. Well, we have a Marines. Yeah, yeah. yeah there's Starfleet, Starfleet Marine Corps. Yeah, and That's, we do drilling and and a lot of honor guard flag flag holding stuff and with the, the guns. Yes. So uh, <laughs> what uh, do you so you, you know? There's a whole bunch of these Star Trek, all different kinds and such like that. Voyager, Deep Space Nine, Enterprise, and everything. What do you guys mostly base your stuff off of? Well, actually, or is the, it just like an overall? The Archangel part? Station is unique in the fact that the, the origin story of the station is that it's an asteroid that was originally built out to be a station internally, 
oh, wow. uh, that was of unknown origin, and it was found by the engineers during Captain Pike's era, and then has been slowly migrated. So it are the for the for the group, we could role play any genre because the station's been there through the whole time. You guys just won Oops. my heart. You're, you LARP? <laughs> I, I'm so down to do this. Let's you said go. LARP, and Jeffrey's eyes just glazed <laughs> yeah, over. Just, this uh, is great. So, what is, so real fast, what is your guys' favorite shows? Which, what you else? Uh, I like Voyager. Yes! <laughs> Next gen. Next gen? I'm a TOS guy. TOS? Uh, Deep Space Nine. Thanks. Next gen. DS9 in the house. Yes, I'm just going to give a fist bump to my Voyager over here. <laughs> what? <laughs> just kidding. No. So, um, you know, seeing all the Star Treks and everything else like that, uh, how, it, like, you know, it's huge in science and everything, and the culture and the society and everything it's been going built from. What do you guys, uh, do you think that Star Trek has actually influenced a lot of uh, science and things oh, going definitely. on in our everyday yeah. culture? Uh, I was just reading the other day, they had an X Prize based on a tricorder, um, that they're building a medical tricorder based off the idea that it should be able to scan all a bunch of different stuff in a smaller and compact space. The, I think they just awarded a, a prize for the X Prize for that. Oh, wow. There's some doctors that came up with one. Um, I mean, the original flip phone was based off of the communicator, the Motorola guys that designed it said Is that. that yeah. you know? I remember reading I mean, about uh, that, and I was like, oh, hey, that's kind of You know, there's a lot of, a lot of stuff that, they, that they've uh, done, the, the iPad from the pads. You know, I mean, there's a lot of technology that was presented in sci-fi, you know, in general that's been built out, but Starfleet or, or Star Trek actually influenced several of those on the way. If, if you look at Cisco, he has Google Glass at one point in Deep Space Nine. And he does. Well. I definitely yeah. enjoy it. I, I can totally see where it, all the, like, our devices that we have now every day, and if you go back to, like, even the original Star Trek, there's some, like, wait a minute, that looks just like, what the... What? Yeah. So it's really interesting. I think, uh, do you guys think like Star Trek actually helped influence a lot of sci-fi that's going out nowadays, or? Mm -hmm. Well, it, it, it depends on, you know, I, I was gonna say, never mind, sorry. That's okay. I was gonna ask, it uh, depends on which version of Star Trek I guess we'd ask about too. Like which version do you think Star Trek has the most influence too? Well, I mean, originally the original series obviously influenced a lot of things because they oh, were yeah. really broaching the genre. Right. And they were pushing things out there and then of course, Roddenberry, you know, thumbing his nose at the censors the whole time while he was doing the original series and, and presenting the morality plays that the advertisers didn't realize were going to be on until they were already, you know, finished production, right? So exactly. So there was a lot of a lot of that going on, and I, I kind of that's why I'm more of a TOS fan is because of, you know, it was like all those morality plays that he did, you know, the the the, the guy that's half black and half white versus the guy who's half white and half black, and you know, right. just the the street. You know um, uh, concepts that he that he kept presenting. You know, I thought were awesome. And then you look at the next generation, and the first two seasons were a lot of replaying all the same morality plays over in the new context, right? So, so it really influenced that as far as the the whole Star Trek series, right? I really like how yeah, I, know, I really like how Star Trek uh, definitely. Um, Mentions like about quantum physics, temporal anomalies, and everything else like that. Now you you know we see the characters Q and such. Do you think there's more out there besides what we hear are on Earth? I mean, there has to be more out there, right? You know, think Vulcans, aliens, or something like that. That's kind of a, a philosophical question that can get you into trouble depending on who you're talking to, right? Yeah. <laughs> yes, but, but I'm going to ask that question. I think <laughs> we start somewhere else. I personally think that it's that amazing hubris to think that we are the only intelligence in this entire you know galaxy cosmos. or wherever we are entire cosmos. Cosmos. yeah, yeah. yeah. <laughs> uh, I think it's also I mean you guys look at some of the actors and writers who've come from the series I mean it's kind of amazing to see how those those people work I mean like what was it um, like several actors back in the original Star Trek generation how we now we consider veteran actors that's where they started in fact I'm trying to remember one actor is like yeah, I got started in Star Trek. This was my line. Watch it out! And then I died. <laughs> then like, and now I want an Oscar. It's kind of cool, you know? So, and I, and what do you guys think? I mean, the writing and the talent, I mean, that's come from Star Trek. I mean, I think it's a lot of amazing. It's amazing. I mean, what's everybody else think? I think of DS9, Ron Moore. Yeah. Um, he, he went on to do Battlestar Galactica, the newer one. So, it's phenomenal writing all across the board. And as you mentioned, actors started with, with all the way with. Excuse me, I'm stumbling over my words here. You're um, okay, no worries. Shatner. Yeah. Obviously, Shatner and 
Joan Collins yes, was yeah, on thank to, you. To the original series. Uh, it's just fun to even go back and watch the old e- e- yeah, episodes yeah. and go, oh, wow, and they went on to do this. It's yeah. funny, like the very first Star Trek that ever came out, my mom, uh, my mom was like, have you ever seen it? I was like, honestly, no, I've never seen the very first couple of episodes of the original Star Trek, and we went back and watched it, and I was just like, this is pretty badass. This is really great. And then now you watch the Star Treks now, and you're just like, whoa. And then now they just uh, they just released, uh, I think it was yesterday, uh, Dis- yeah. Star Trek Discovery. Yeah, the trailer for it. Yeah. yeah, and it's the yeah. it's a it's a series before the prequel of the new updated oh, Star the new Trek. New updated series. Yes. Yeah, but it's in the first officer's perspective of science. Oh, sci- okay. Sorry, first officer. I thought it was the science officer. It's like I remember that they said this was not going to be the captain. Then that was a big deal. Yeah, and I think that's kind of a cool way to do it, right? To approach yeah. a new, a, a new piece of the of the rebooted yeah. universe, right? So, so question: How has, other than being part of this awesome crew, how has Star Trek affected you guys' normal day life or inspired you guys? Uh, Reed and I met and got married. <laughs> yeah, we got of, uh, ma- yeah Archangel. because of Star Trek, and and my Aww. son, my son joined the group because uh, they also role play. They did Dungeons and Dragons, but they also role play Star Trek and then I was helping with uh, planning a chaperoning a thing to NASA down at the, in Houston Space Center and that's where I met this guy and they said hey you like Star Trek more than your son so why don't you join so <laughs> and then we got married so oh <laughs> yay now tell, her, tell us did you have a Star Trek themed wedding no, no. <laughs> but we did go to the Star Trek experience in Vegas because that's I'm where we got I'm from Vegas, married. and yeah. I every chance I got the money, it was like twenty five, thirty bucks to do it. I I went to it because I was like, oh, because the, there was rumors about because in Las Vegas everything's always changing, and I wish they didn't get rid of the Star Trek experience because it was such a phenomenon. They the way they did, it, you went onto the, you got boarded onto the Enterprise, and the Borg attacked the ship, and you were on the shuttle, and all sorts of yeah. things were happening. It was probably oh, well, even amazing. just the the presentation when you walked in. You walked through the history of all the different series, right? Exactly. And yeah. then they had the characters that walked around. You're like, yeah. hey, yeah. They had the actors, yeah, the Ferengi. That, uh, the Ferengi. Oh god, yeah. the guy that worked at the little like concession stand. He was. So, I was like, oh. <laughs> well, what about you? How did how does it how does it affect you other than being part of the script? Just the socialization to hang out that's I, I agree I definitely like the social everything that can come that, the community that can mm-hmm. come part of it it's great I mean, what about you well to follow their suit I actually met my wife through um, Starfleet as well because um, I was on the Rihanna and she was on the previous uh, Archangel. <laughs> previous yeah. Archangel and Cross ship hanging socializations and so if you want to go meet someone, folks, <laughs> go to Starfleet. What we're saying is Star Trek people will hook up. If you want to do match, do sfi.org. Yes. Yeah. There you go. Start <laughs> recruiting the old way. Right. I like that. That's great. What about you, Kathy? Yeah. Um, I, all my best friends are from uh, the USS Rihanna. Are from the first ship I was on. I I met them when I first moved here. I didn't know anybody. And they've become my best friends. That's amazing. And these guys' stories are just so great. What about you? As far as actual Star Trek affecting my daily life, it's really identifying with the characters, looking at uh, Next Generation, looking at Data, how he's evolved not only through the films but through the actual series itself, and how he's become more human. How he's become more human in his uh, not only daily life but his emotion chip and so and so forth and look at the other characters that grew and identifying with their struggles and look at my life and realize I'm growing with them and seeing some of the same things and applying their things that they've learned that the writers well, obviously the writers exactly. have, have put them through to to learn and teach people not only about our society but our own lives and that's that's one thing I like about Star Trek is because it's been a series it's been going on for ages and a lot of people can relate to the characters and what the, how the writers write them, and it's just it's great because you like you see that you know Janeway she influences me like so much, and I watch Voyager probably a dozen times now. I'm I'm watching it now. I'm on the third season, so it's like my dad, and now my dad's coming. You know, he's coming to join me and watching Star Trek, and he's wondering I was like, why are you so into this? And he's like, oh okay. He's like he's a huge Enterprise fan. But I'm getting him into more Voyager, so I'm like, yes, come to my side. It's really great. I, 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 I definitely really enjoy how you can uh, 
relate to the characters. I also notice a lot of stories of, of, of younger geeks. And my father's not really a geek. I mean, he, you know, construction and stuff. But I remember sitting with my father watching Star Trek because it was on syndication because that, that it had enough episodes to become syndicated, which is what really, in my opinion, saved the series was syndication. And yeah, I mean, have you guys, I mean, you guys heard other people say the same thing? Like, you know, my dad or someone relative, not really into it, but they totally love Star Trek and we watched, watched together when we saw the movies. I'm, I'm going to some of the conventions you talk to folks in the, and, and you hear that a lot more than you would think that it was, it was, you know, we weren't big sci-fi and we didn't really watch a lot of stuff, but that was the family community thing, right, was to come and sit and watch Star Trek together kind of thing, right? Thanks. And you hear that more than you would think, actually. That's that's really cool. With um, with with all of Star Trek's progression, do you where do you where do you hope the series goes next? Now that we've got Discovery, I mean it's gonna be an access show. Where do you guys where do you guys hope this series goes? Just as fans, I'm just curious because every fan has their own theory. I'd like to see them get um, back to the to the unknown space. Get back to finding out new, finding new stuff, right, and figuring out. Well, they go where no one new has new yeah. yeah, go back into that. It's go back into that instead. You know, they uh, they dive back into some of the other series. It was a lot more interpersonal. Like mm-hmm. DS Nine was all on the station, so it was a lot more about the character interaction and all that. And I'd like to see a little more development of the character interaction under the stress of new environments, and see how they how they work that out into the new. Into the the, the the new rebooted. Uh, Are you hoping they bring universe. the Borg into this one? Not really. No. 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 Well, there's like no one that's a fan of the Borg. I mean, I'm a huge <laughs> oh, fan of the Borg. Oh, I, I like love the Borg. But, 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 but I yeah. think that they need to move on to another. The yeah. Breed. Uh, yeah, a new an, a new antagonist, right? I would, yeah, I would actually fan really fan. enjoy that if they bring some kind of new species or a couple more thing, you know, that goes against the Federation and such like that. And I think with the updated Star Trek and everything else like that, they're actually going kind of that route. I mean, we got to see a little bit of the Klingons, and you saw Vulcan and everything else like that. And so they're, I think they're starting to branch out a little bit more. They're doing pieces by pieces. And from what I've been reading uh, since this morning is that people on the forums are saying that they're really actually hoping that they do a little bit more besides what we, the, the known and go to more of the unknown mm-hmm. and such like that. You know, go against a nebula or a f- cloud god or something cute. <laughs> whatever, whatever's on top of that that asteroid they're trying to meet in the pilot episode that they were kind of showing off that that like casket or whatever that is it's exactly. like what is that why is there a casket in star trek i think the uh trailer did a really good job it was like they didn't give out too much they gave enough for you to be like wait what was that what was that what was that oh oh this is it's gonna be good <laughs> i wonder if that if that raising casket is kind of a uh an homage to the going to stovacor kind of thing Ooh, that would be definitely interesting. So I'm like curious that. about that, you know. Um, but I'm just well, jazzed, you know, that they got a new show altogether that they're going to continue trying yeah, to. You know, that CBS has enough faith <laughs> in, in the in the product to keep putting, you know, money into it and to keep trying to 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 keep going. Exactly, right? and I think um, a lot of the Star Trek fans are really going to enjoy this mini series that's going to be coming up soon, and you know, especially with the movies that are coming out every now and then, and now you get to see the prequel. How they all came to be. Uh, I think you does show how much faith they have, though, because this is the flagship they're using to promote their streaming service. That you, if you want to watch this, you have to buy our streaming service, and this is, right. this is definitely going to be the, the merchandising. Test. Merchandising. <laughs> they're boldly going with their streaming service. Exactly. There you go. <laughs> they're boldly going where Netflix has gone before. Um, I, 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 one of my last questions for you guys is: What is, in your mind, the pinup uh, all series? What is your favorite episode of all time? It's like the one you can just sit down and watch. Uh, I like the Year of Hell on Voyager. Kong yes. 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 Oh, Kong. Well, let's say oh, Kong for a minute. I was like, they yeah. did Kong on it? What? Uh-huh. <laughs> oh, I, it's too hard to. Okay, we're skipping that. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I, I have too many favorites. It's a bit of a tricky question. Yeah, it's hard to pinpoint which yeah. one you It's like, which favorite from which genre? Yeah. Or which show? Yeah. Exactly. Well, OSD oh, oh, then, because you said you're an yeah. original fan. Oh, the original series? Mm-hmm. I like. Um, the Tila, sorry. <laughs> I'm hardly uh, so I can't think. I, I, now I'm brain farted, so I can't remember. <laughs> yeah, but, yeah. Move on. Um, Move on. I don't know. I'd have to say City a favorite would be. Well, that's mine. Yeah. Yeah. Um, one of the, like the classic, more 
kind of like mirror, mirror, or trouble with tribbles. Those mirror, are mirrors, high. oh, trouble mirror with tribbles. Yeah. Those, those if, like you got, if you got, if you got trouble, well. <laughs> you have trouble. If you got trouble, you have a lot of trouble coming towards you. Get rid of that thing. I'll, uh, City on the Edge of Forever. City on the there Edge of Forever. There we go. Yeah. DS9, it's the third season. I can't remember the name of the episode, sadly, but it's the one where they're stuck in the ore processing center, and the entire station goes on lockdown, and... Ooh. I think it's actually called Lockdown. I think that was. I think it always. Is it? It's called Lockdown. Yeah, because that was the whole point. It was all, everything was on. Like they couldn't do anything. And oh wow! They yeah. had to get Ducat to basically least to come in, override the command codes, and even Ducat was caught. You know, there was backups in case Ducat betrayed. What, yeah. Cardassians. I gotta say, mine is. I, I can't remember the end of the episodes, but it's the end of Voyager. Where, spoiler, three, two, spoiler, <laughs> one, where Janeway goes in and she gets the hell with the temporal ini uh, initiative or whatever. She goes in and she basically changes time and saves Voyager and kills the Borg. Ha! Take that, Gavin. <laughs> <laughs> so, I, 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 mine is also the city of... On the, they're actually, uh, IDW just released the, on the, the original script as a comic book, a multi-series oh. comic book, and it's... Wow, I can see why they edited that one because, like, Spock nearly breaks a guy's arm because he shorted him money. I love well, Spock. Yeah. Um, Spock's such an iconic character, too. I've got the, the disc series from Harlan Ellison where he goes in and rants about how they destroyed his product from his original writing and how it should have been, and he had a bunch of actors do the reading of the, of this, the show as he originally wrote it, and it was a lot different. I mean, there was a different... Uh, there was a different... Uh, Antagonist in it. It was another character who was more of a criminal that went through the portal instead. Yeah, of he was a drug dealer. Yeah. Yeah. Oh wow. And there was yeah. a whole lot of stuff that was different. Yeah. I gotta ask uh, before we go ahead and wrap it up here and get to our ten things. Do any of you play Star Trek Online? I have a character. I haven't played in a long time. Oh, I play Star Trek Online right now, and they just released a whole lot of new content. So we were talking about going bully go and get to the unknown in the game. They've actually. Um, They've actually released a lot more of the Alpha Quadrant, a little bit of the Beta, and then more of the Delta Quadrant. You get more into the storyline and such, but it's mostly about the Alpha right now. And the, the amount of uh, villains that they have are going on, and the references to all the Star Treks is just brilliantly written. Oh, and by the way, I'm supposed to say, hello, Rogue Squadrant. That's my fleet. <laughs> so, I think that there's, there's a lot actually, of kind of humor uh, there. We have some chapters who actually play. Yeah. And they meet in the I think the there's game. one of the correspondence chapters. Are you serious? Chapters. One of the correspondence chapters uses the I'm going to hold STO. on to this for dear life. You have no idea. <laughs> yeah, but I think they use STO to do their meetings, and they're a correspondence chapter, so they're all over the place. Oh, but that's, that's where they amazing. Meet. I play a Bajoran. I, I am a, a Bajoran, you know, and a, you know, I work with the Federation and everything else like that. I'll start but, it up. Oh, yeah. I, I, I actually am going to be getting an outfit all made up and such like that. So you guys, when you guys go to conventions, you guys all dress up and everything else like that, and you see... Do people like go full on oh, spread yeah. and everything oh, like that? Yeah. Oh, yeah. Oh, that's so great. There's usually a board, in, especially in Vegas, at the Vegas convention. Exactly. So it's, it's Vegas board. is so a before, before, Lots of Andorians. So before, oh God. Uh, real quick, before we wrap it up, where can we find you guys in such like that? Um, right here. ArcangelStation.com, <laughs> and also you can yeah. look up Starfleet so, at SFI.org. ArcangelStation, Arc with a K. Arc with a K. There we go. Facebook page. Well, guys, I think uh, not public. Uh, this okay. was awesome. We thank you so much for being on Ours here, guys. You oh. are amazing. You're full of knowledge and everything. <laughs> the geekery that goes with Star Trek. So, Pocky, I think we're about to go up to our top ten things. What's it? We have a top ten links list. It's gonna be hilarious because it's Gavin explaining to us the order of movies we should actually watch. And I Explain the list that. to. <laughs> yeah. Harley. This is going to be really good, guys. So, thanks again for being on the show. We'll have you come on at right before we get off, and here's 10 things. Quick. Hi, everyone. Welcome to this week's 10 Things list. Harley's back with us. I'm back. And she hasn't watched a lot of these Star Trek movies. I've only so. watched the new ones. I said... You know what I'll do for you, Harley? I'm going to rank the Star Trek movies as the way I like them, so you'll know if you really want to watch one, what you can expect. Yes. So that's this week's 10 Things movie, the non-Star Trek fan ranking Star Trek films, and the crews Another out there -Star Trek are fan. probably going to be like killing me by the end of it. So, non-Star Trek fans. All right, we're going to kick it off with number 10, which is Into Darkness. 
Man, this film got a lot of hate, but uh, it, it, it wasn't too terribly bad for the new reboot universe. I thought, did oh it, boy. Did it, like, it also went up against Suicide Squad for makeup yeah. and lost. So, yeah, so number 10 is Into Darkness. I think it's, I, I think they rebooted too much. Instead of doing something original, I would like to see something original, but I liked him as Khan. Yeah, I, I know you. I know you can't. And then they did the whole reverse death scene, so <laughs> it was a little cheesy, but it's still kind of fun to watch Spock go beat him up at the end because that's just kind of fun. Anything watching Spock beat anybody up is funny. All right, so number nine on our list is Star Trek Generations. Now I put this one on because this is, I think you have to. There's no way to really transition between the universes, so they said, okay, let's have Kirk trapped in some void with crazy guy from. I keep wanting to say he looks like Bowser from the Mario Brothers movie, but I forget what his name is. Malcolm McDowell. Malcolm McDowell. Thank you, Rocky. <laughs> <laughs> that's how that's, that's how I'm bar with guy. this is. Yeah, and so it's kind of gimpy, but it was nice to be able to hand the the thing. And Kirk went out like a bitch in that movie. I'm not even gonna lie, but you're gonna you're gonna enjoy that one just because of the sheer absurdity of it. Not as much as number eight, which is the Voyage Home, where we're time traveling to save whales. <laughs> <laughs> Wait, why whales? Because whales can save the future, apparently. Okay. Um, Is that one of those so long and thanks for all the fish moments? Yeah, kind of. <laughs> uh, they have to travel back to the 80s and they invent things that are existing in the future because maybe they invented them and they save whales and they fly to the future with a giant log in space. <laughs> I can't even say this with a straight face, Carly. <laughs> like, it's literally It's like Pumpkin Spice Day. <laughs> All right. Not quite as bad as our number seven, which is Star Trek Nemesis. Interesting idea. <laughs> kind of poorly executed because young, angsty, emo Picard as a bad guy just doesn't really work for me. <laughs> but it's still kind of fun to watch because there's lots of great action scenes and there's the core of something amazing there. You can see that they had the idea... But they just they said, went far left field. What can we possibly do after they took on God? Emo Picard. <laughs> he's, he's the new Kylo Ren. <laughs> exactly. It's lots of fun to watch. But, man, it's just not really up there. This is one where they're kind of hammering the nails in the next generation universe. We're running out of ideas. <laughs> Let me just pull something out of a hat now. So, running out of ideas. We're going back to the original universe for this next one. Next on the list is Undiscovered Country. The reason I picked this one especially is because my biggest problem with Star Trek is it's too perfect. And this is one of those movies that started showing there's cracks in the system. So it's lots of fun to watch, kind of a darker take on the Federation and the Klingons and things that happen. So if you really want like a good intrigue movie, this is a really good one to log into. Just want the darkness here. <laughs> but Let's throw that out there. That goes with the next one, which is Insurrection, which is in the Next Generation timeline. And it's kind of the same thing. The, part of the Federation's got cracks in the system. But don't get too attached to it because in the next movie, everything's back to normal. So, back to being perfect. <laughs> back to being perfect. They set up the perfect, perfect, perfect flaw. And they just, oops, we forgot we wrote that, basically. Yeah, hang on, let me, let me throw that far left field and you're going to ignore that ever happened. Yeah, but I like Insurrection. It's lots of fun to see the Federation and its flaws. And that, to me, is more approachable than the Utopian universe. Which is my whole problem with Star Trek to begin with. Because they're so perfect and creative. So the next up is, I put this because it's my monster, she may watch it all the time, is Search for Spock. <laughs> what happens when you kill one of the most favorite characters and it's not a comic book movie? Well, let's find a way to resurrect it because that was, yeah, like, I think so Z-Boy was like, I'm done, but I'm done with two. And then like, no, you contracted for three. So he was like, okay. So, so, so Spock is becoming, in this movie, Spock is Wolverine. Kind of. They have to, it's a whole Genesis thing. And they have to go save him from the planet. And for a resurrection story, it's kind of, it's, it's pretty fun. Not a whole lot happens, but it's still pretty fun to watch them try to revive a character that they're like, oops, maybe we shouldn't have killed off the anyways. Didn't work for Optimus Prime. It's not going to work for Spock. <laughs> Which takes me to number three, the new Star Trek movie. I love I the reboot. I, th I don't know anyone who really doesn't like it. Even The only problem my mom had, because she's such a diehard original fan, was that Spock and Uhura were going out. If that's the only thing I know a diehard fan, I, I'm, I'm, I see the eyes gazing at me from out there. I don't know if they're daggers or they're like, yes. I think, I think they're glaring at us. <laughs> it's fun. It brings it to where... Set new, phasers to kill. <laughs> set phasers to kill. They were hot! It's, it set a new tone for Star Trek that 
really brought it into a modern day where people can approach it because we're, 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 we're ruined by Star Wars. Let's we are. facts. We like our strife. Um, I like the, the hardship Which there. then goes to my personal favorite, First Contact. I love the Borg. I don't know if I've said that enough. Yeah, um, you said it a couple times. I love the Borg. And this was a great movie. I involved time traveling going back to when First Contact happened with, you know, Farmer Hoggett. Which will always be, that'll do pig. I don't care what he's in. Do I hear that do. in my mind everywhere. So I expect him at the end, setting the rock off, going over. That'll do pig. <laughs> That's all I wanted. That'll do of course, he'll do it. But it's fun because you get to see a lot of the Borg. They introduced the Borg Queen, a bunch of the way the Borg works. They brought back up Lacutus because that was my favorite story arc since I was a next generation junkie. It was fun. Yeah, they relied on time travel to be a silly plot device, but. You get the board fight on the ship. You get them trying to make first contact happen on the planet because Farmer Hoggett is a drunk douche. Um, that's really the best way I can put that one. But we're going to go with number one. And if anyone argues with me on this one, I know you're not a Star Trek fan. Come Wrath of Khan. Hands down, if you're going to watch the Star Trek movie, watch that one because you don't have to know anything about Star Trek because I did it and you completely get what's going on. It and it great. is the original Khan who is much better than, sh- oh boy. Better than Cumberbatch. Cumberbatch. I can't even, s- who is it? Cumberbatch. 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 Oh, Cumberbatch, yeah. Cumberbatch. <laughs> so, much like better, Benedict? but if you want to see a way a movie's done properly, like a true, I mean the first Star Trek movie is so god awful, that you get this amazing piece of work that ties into Search for Spock, and then you go back into Crazyville, it's like, okay, this is why we love Star Wars. But, so what did you think of my list? That was my I, list I of think movies. Your list, your list is a lot easier to follow. <laughs> Just going down, if you really want to watch it, start with Wrath of Khan and work your way up from there. So, that's been it for this 10 things list. Up next, just for Harley. Just for me. Is a special bonus level. So don't go anywhere. We'll be right back to wrap up the show after this. Massively forced to give up. Chicken attack, chicken attack. Watch your back before it fades to black. Then I look calm, that's what I'm Come on, chicken ass, go chicken go. She was not here, so I saw this at the beginning of Guardians of the Galaxy Draft House. I texted Kevin and said, I need this clip, and he found it within 30 minutes, and I said, this is for Harley. I so sent you, were you not that video. Oh, I don't remember. You said you're like eight of them. I'm like, I'm not going through eight chicken videos, Harley. I'm just I not doing it. I sent you that chicken video, him yodeling, just... and then I sent you uh, Korean Lady Gaga chicken. What did so, I just watch? Yeah, so that's been this episode of Fan Service with our amazing guests. Okay, station. Captain Scarlet. Show your flag. Show your flag. And so we're going to announce now that next week we're doing our brand new game show, Battle Geeks, where it's going to be Star Trek versus Star Wars. Yes. And we did a test of Battle Geeks on a Saturday a couple weeks ago, and it was freaking hilarious. Jeffrey used to be a cheerleader, apparently. Yep. So we're not going to ruin the fun, but I will tell you, one of the things is someone's going to have to act out spaceships. You're going to have to straight out spaceships. That's the only thing I'm going to tell you one of the challenges is. <laughs> and you think it's easy, but the other team has potions that are going to jack you up. I would like to say a few things about your top ten list. Uh, one, <laughs> I, I think someone wanted to tell you later after the show, just so you know. And, and two, the, the clear aluminum that was talked about in that movie Transparent actually, aluminum. Ne- Transparent Transparent aluminum 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 actually now existed. exists because of that movie. That's yeah, because, you know, Scotty went back to 1980-something to make it. Yeah. So this will be a lot easier for me to watch than the four Sharknados movies I watched last night. Yeah. All right, so that's been it for this week. We hope you guys have enjoyed it. We have had so much fun having you guys on. You guys always bring it. Like, you guys are all right. You're one of my favorite guests to have out guys here. Are great. And I was like, I don't have Reed's email address, so I'm emailing. She's like, no, here it is. Here it is. Let's do this. I was like, yes. Um, yes. So, you need email? Oh, yes. <laughs> and it's Archangel. I know your business card. I always misspell it. That's what yes. it is. Arch- I say Archangel. Archangel, yes. <laughs> So, 
we hope you guys had a great time. Last yeah. minute, where they can find you online? Huh? Oh, uh, archangelstation.com. And SFI.org. SFI. SFI. What yeah, is SFI? And if you're SFI. out there and you're not Star in this Fleet area, um, SFI.org website has a chapter finder where you can look and find people in, in Fleet that are near you. Jeffrey's like on a sugar rush. He's like, I can play my game and do it immediately. Yeah! <laughs> I'm, I'm going to tell you right now, I'm probably going to join you guys after tonight. Okay. I'm not going to okay. lie. I tell you, I'm so done. Games. Games. We play games. Yeah. Jeffrey so, has to dress as a chicken ninja to say. What? Yes. We chicken will ninja. see you guys <laughs> again next week. Yes. We have yes. Star Trek fans coming in. Star Wars, yeah, Star Wars fans are going to take you on, and I don't think it'll be as easy as last time. So be prepared. Uh, uh, we will. It is tricky. It gets real It gets tricky. real crazy Studying. real quick Studying. because <laughs> whichever team loses around, the other team gets to nerf shoot someone off. It's fun. So your team shrinks. I died the first. Game. Yeah, they picked off Jeff first. Then he got brought back from the dead to be a cheerleader. Yep. And let me tell you, he could spell things with a pom pom. Bam. <laughs> it was insane. So we'll see you guys next week for our brand new game show format called Battle East Live. Don't forget, Zombie Life TV is on at 10 o'clock. It's going to be crazy. Jeffrey's on. They're doing paranormal magic, all sorts of fun stuff. And we don't have live shows because they're doing something in the other studio. So it's probably repeats. I don't know what comes on it's after repeats. this. Repeats. It's going to repeats. repeats. And next week. Is the actual official 100% launch of cosplay behind the costume, and so it's going to be a full-on fun show. <laughs> Everyone's doing it. I'm done with you guys. <laughs> like my hey, mom. Hey, no, nothing. Real, real quick, guys, don't forget to subscribe to our YouTube channel, uh, Fanboy TV, and then also our Facebook at facebook.com/fanboytv. And we're and always looking for people who want to come and join us yes. and do projects. So let I'll us reach out things. to us. We have so much fun. You don't have any or, idea. Or if you have a project you want us to talk about on air, maybe it's fits yeah. what we're doing. Yeah. Start contacting us. The website I'm going to open next week. I'm Hell or High Water. We're starting to get all our it's pictures done. It's going to be great. I saw, you guys saw a preview on Facebook Live yesterday as yep. I was doing that. And our secret projects. I'm kind of revealing that as well. Which is going to be amazing. So we are good to go. That's last minute goodbyes, anybody? Chicken Divine. attack Colts. Live long and prosper. Dark Live long and prosper. Chicken Colts. I promise you this now. There will never be another singing chicken video. We had a month of those. You weren't here. I brought this one specifically for you. We're done. We're done. Thank you. You gotta have Lady Gaga chicken then. We're done with chicken videos on this show. I'm gonna come dress as a chicken next week. Do it. I'm just kidding. I'm just kidding. I can't do that. Be Lady Gaga chicken with me. We're wrapping this show up right now. We'll see you guys. Have a good night, guys. We'll see you soon. Wait. Last minute things. Last minute things. Subscribe. Like. Comment. Podcast. Share. Follow or find our podcast on iTunes and whatnot. Look up Fanboys. We're on Google yeah. Play. We're on iTunes. We're on Spreaker. Right. I, will, I, I want to do an Archangel show. I'm putting that in, in your pro, your thing now. Start writing it. Right so, now. Yeah. so, and I will bring me. I will be returning Fanboy TV Beyond as soon as my computer works. We have a lot of other podcasts you like at as well. So check those out. And I'm going to say this now. Listen to the Mary Sue Tournament podcast oh because we're going to turn that into a show. I'm talking to Robin about it right now. You want to a fan fiction crazy like contest show? It's amazing. Anyways, we're done. Let's say goodbye, everybody. Bye. Bye.